Grand Rising, my friends. Welcome back. You have joined me on this journey before, and if this is your first time, what's up? How are you today? Here, we are doing wonderful. I know you had a great day. And I know you're going. I know you're going to have a great day as well. I know you've been having a great day and going to continue to have a great day. Um, not gonna begin of the week. We're gonna start out. Um, hopefully, not even hopefully. We know we're gonna have some exciting news and interesting things to learn. There are probably gonna be some things that upset us as well. That's reality. You know, can't have everything. You want to be more content than just some artificial happiness. So we're going to look for the positive in everything because that's what we do because we hear about positivity. And that means if there's someone that you like, admire, love, respect, and you want them to have a little bit of a boost in their day, write something kind about them down in the comic books, <laughs> comic books, in the comment section and... Uh, send this video to them and tell them to take a look at it and see if they can find what you wrote about them. With that, moving into Bitcoin mining revenue climbs the 57 climbs 50 to 57%, highest since June. According to Glassnode, and Glassnode is one of those companies that perform a lot of chain analysis, blockchain analysis for Bitcoin. So where we discussed before that Bitcoin is not at some untraceable system. It just requires the necessary know-how to figure out uh, where the money is going. Glassnode is one of those companies who knows where the where the money is going, and they and they provide a lot of other data. And people, probably a lot of organizations, get their data from Glassnode. Hashtag Bitcoin miner revenue per hash has climbed by fifty seven percent. That's what I thought. It was saying two fifty seven percent, but it's by fifty seven percent. That's what made more sense. Returning to mid two thousand twenty levels as the Great Migration continues. The typical nine hundred BTC mine per day are distributed between around 62.5% of the peak cash power seen in May. Okay. Bitcoin experienced a significant drop in mining volume following a clampdown on crypto operations by the Chinese government in May. Many miners were forced to leave the Asian country with the majority of the hash rate moving to Europe and the United States. And we are not complaining at all about that. Ahead of the clampdown that began in May, Bitcoin's mining power peaked at 180 exahashes before falling by more than 50%. Exahashes is a lot. However, the hash rate has recorded an uptick of about 25% with the mining power currently at about 112.5 exahashes per second. Bah, bah, bah. Primary factor responsible for the revenue increase is Bitcoin's mining difficulty. So a drop in the mining difficulty, mining difficulty means that when individuals are mining, they get higher revenue. So if you're a miner, you know, a higher difficulty means a stronger network. Network's pretty strong as is. Lower difficulty means as a miner, you get more revenue from mining. So they do not mine at all. Ha, 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 ha. No pun intended. I think that's the first time I've ever been able to catch myself and say that at once, so I'm very happy about that. But our boy here, Jackie, hey, look. You know, everybody going to be about how they feel about different things. You know, if it's political beliefs, spiritual, religious beliefs, you know, uh, whatever your belief system may be. But, hey, Jack loves Bitcoin. <laughs> And whatever you feel about him, and you like Bitcoin, Jack be riding hard versus everything like no Ethereum, Cardano, Cardano. Nah, he ain't trying to hear anything. He is straight Bitcoin. So he's mining through this service called Compass, Compass Mining, and it's, it's actually pretty cool what they do. So you know, it just talks about stuff. 
Well, maybe some individuals may know. It's the first time you're hearing about this. First time you, you maybe caught whatever I named the video, the, the thumbnail today. Bitcoin is mined through an energy intensive process called proof of work in which computers compete to perform an array of complex mathematical equations in exchange for cryptocurrency rewards. Very simply, and I'll do a whole intro of cryptocurrencies. People love those type of videos. And I'll let you know, hey, look, at the end of the day, I like discussing this as well. Every 10 minutes, so it started, there's 10 minute blocks in the, um, the Bitcoin blockchain, and each block is married to the block before and after in space and time. That way, it's, almost, it, it, it's impossible unless you have more than 50% of the processing power to rewrite any of the blocks just because of the way it's designed. It's beautiful. Anyway, 10 minute blocks, and every 10 minutes, there's a reward. And I think we're right now 6.25 Bitcoin. So every 10 minutes, it's like, all right, the network solved the problem. And every and all the computers that are running Bitcoin in the, in, the, um, in the world are trying to run these equations to solve the equation, which is set up the way it's so beautiful, the way no matter how if you had two computers doing it, it would take 10 minutes. If you have now we have however many hundreds of thousands, millions of computers um, or devices because mining devices and anyway it takes 10 minutes and it gets more difficult the more uh devices you add to the network long and short of it though it's beautifully designed sorry i just get so caught into it the work itself is arbitrary miners are simply expending computer power exchange for a potential reward which can be incredibly valuable given bitcoin's current price so at the end of the 10 minutes, somebody in the world, one device in the world solves the equation and gets that reward of 6.25. But during that time, all the transactions and transaction fees are distributed throughout the system. Now, I'm not 100 percent about, you know, all the details. I think that's somewhat how it works. But if somebody, you know, you know, better, please jump in. Um, so it's worthwhile to mine even if you don't get the rewards. Uh, so anyway, Compass Mining, what they do is you, 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 you sign up with them. Let me see if it says it right here. So you sign up with them and you choose a ASIC rig, which is a mining rig. And I don't want to butcher what the, the acronym is now, but it's something about a specific integrated circuit. Um, algorithm, algor algorithm is specific integrated circuit not 100 percent, but something like that and so the long story how that works is that you know at first people were mining bitcoin with you know regular cpu then graphic cards gpu became important then now they use these very specific devices that can run these algorithms faster long story short you can go to this company you choose the rig you want to buy through Compass, which it will then source and install in one of its global mining facilities. The company sets it up and, jo and, and joins the mining pool of your choice. You'll pay for the electricity cost for the machine, and then the Bitcoin rewards from your machine are paid into your crypto wallet. So you go on their site, or you know, probably their site, you set up and say, hey, this is the machine I want. Here's the money. They go get it. They set it up. They charge you for the electricity and, a, you, and, a, and you know, you probably have your, your, your private keys to where, and, and I'm also, it's probably a fee that you got to pay. I'm sure it's a fee you got to pay as well. And then that's one way if you're not going to source the machine yourself and set up, your house, which is not that difficult. We're going to talk about that, about ways to make money from cryptocurrency. My, you know, if you can, the device, it, you know, are, it, it's relative in terms of the expense, but you can, Spend a lot of money or you can spend some money and just start and, and kind of just learn and understand how it's going for your on your budget in a way. But uh, Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter and Square. Is using them to mine Bitcoin, so he set some up. I wonder how many he bought, but I mean, not really. I ain't, I ain't pocket watching nobody out here. Except for Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, these banks, watching what they do. 
Yeah, I ain't lying about that. I am watching what they do. Because <laughs> I may, you know, this is never financial advice, legal advice, medical advice, advice about the spiritual or anything that can be construed as advice in any shape, form, or fashion. You know, hey, you may be investing in some of these companies, and yeah, you're watching them. Make sure they're using your money correctly, or you may want to get invested with them. So a trio of filings with the Security and Exchange Commission on Thursday revealed that both Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan are working with investment service company NYDIG, which is New York Digital Investment Group, to offer Bitcoin investment exposure to their respective client bases. Two of the notices named J.P. Morgan Securities as the recipient of the shares tied to the Bitcoin fund and another notice names Wells Fargo Clearing Services. All three will offer pooled investment fund interest from private issuers that NYDIG has established to hold Bitcoin. So, as we spoke before, the rich or the wealthy clientele of these organizations are given the opportunity to put their put their money in financial vehicles that are not offered to all of the clients of these companies and why would that be why would there be two systems in the open how many hidden systems that we never hear about must there be in that case so jp morgan wells fargo are offering their private clients the ability to invest in cryptocurrencies and you know we talked the other day is it too late is are we are we mainstream past early adoption? It's still very early. I we we I think we can't even imagine. See, and and we'll talk about that at one point because it has to deal with exponential growth and cryptocurrencies. The changes to our financial system are changes that are exponential, and it's difficult for our brains to imagine exponential growth and what that looks like. But we will know it when we see it. Just just saying that Bloomberg and Galaxy Digital, um, which is a company I believe is owned by Novogratz. Is he the man? I don't know if it says in here or not. Um, but they're they're gonna have a um they're gonna create a index for de the DeFi market. And they specifically are going to look at Uniswap, Ave, Maker, Compound, Yearn Finance, Syntex, SushiSwap, Ox, and Uma. UA, MA, I don't know if that people say Uma or UA, UMA. Not too familiar with that one. We'll have to look into that project. These other ones have been around for a while. So it's just going to be Bloomberg and Galaxy Digital get together and they create these these tickers and they got the ticker DeFi, which is sweet, which is an index. It, this benchmark is designed to measure the performance of the largest DeFi protocols by market value that offer financial services without a central financial intermediary such as brokerage, exchanges, or banks. The benchmark is owned and administered by Bloomberg's Index Services Limited and is co-branded with Galaxy. So it just would be a, a way that people can look to say, oh, how is the market doing? They're trying to get uh, get their name branded early with the DeFi market. Oh, how? Oh, go check out. Go check out Bloomberg's. Uh, how the DeFi market look today? What the ticker say? Smart. Can't, have, can't, be, can't be upset with that. Bitcoin is doing well. I mean, it's just further and further saturation into the market, which is good for for all of us who think it may be a way to help assist with creating that generational wealth that's going to be important to be able to plan the future we want for our for our for our progeny for our children and, and what comes after us and there's no reason we don't deserve that actually we more than deserve that if you watching this video you deserve that in life no one's ever told you that. Or if it ain't sunk into your heart and your chest at all times. And that's just metaphorically, heart and chest. Sometimes I speak in metaphor if that's not clear. And I speak in stupid voices as well. You deserve 
to be content in this world, you deserve to have moments of blissful uh, ecstasy, happiness. You deserve to have financial security and create that for those you love. It's going to be a lot of forces that try to stop you from gaining that or trying to convince you that that's not possible. You have to learn to ignore that. It's like a voice in your head. You know, we it's now I want to get deeper to the metaphysics of it today, but you have to learn to shut down the negative programming that I've talked before that is put into all of us at young ages to be a consumer, to be someone who is not to thrive and excel on this plane. And it's by design. So speaking with going along the lines of the next level stuff, major nuclear fusion milestone reached as ignition triggered in a lab. What is ignition? Let's get straight to it. This is all this, this blah, blah, everybody just patting themselves on the back very hard. <clears throat> Reaching ignition. The type of nuclear reaction that fuels current power stations is fission. Fission is splitting atoms apart. Fusion is taking two atoms and fusing them together. So think of it, fission, two S's split apart, S is split apart, fusion, one S together. The splitting of atoms to release energy. Fusion instead forces atoms of hydrogen together to gain energy, producing a large amount of energy and crucially limited radioactive waste. For this reason, a way to create efficient fusion reaction reactions has been sought for decades to produce clean energy using few resources. However, fusion reactions have proven difficult to control and to date no fusion experiment has produced more energy than has been put into been put in to get the reaction going. While the latest experiment still requires more energy in than it get, got out, it is the first to reach the crucial stage of ignition, which allows considerably more energy to be produced than ever before and, and paves the way for break even where the energy in is matched by the energy out. There are two main ways researchers worldwide are currently trying to produce, and there's actually more than two ways that they're trying to produce fusion energy. This way that they did here, they used uh, the NIF, which is the National Ignition Facility, focused on inertial, inertial, in, 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 inertial confinement fusion, which uses a system of lasers to heat up fuel pellets producing a plasma, a cloud of charged ions. So basically, they hold in space through magnetic fields, um, these pellets of uh, deuterium or tri uh, tritium, the, the fuel pellets contain heavy versions of hydrogen, deuterium or tritium, which are easier to fuse, produce more energy. So they hold these pellets of deuterium and deuterium in, um, like suspended with uh, magnetic fields and they got all of these lasers moving. Them. For those who are just listening, I'm, I'm showing my hand being just hovering in space and then like, 360 degrees around, sorry about that, 360 degrees, hit the mic, 360 degrees around um, they around this area, they have these laser beams focused on a single point, you know, where the pellets are going to be, and they use that to heat it up to basically, you know, millions of degrees Celsius, probably, Fahrenheit as well, and, you know, to try to cause it to form a plasma and the, and the goal is to do the same thing what's in the middle of the sun which would be it would just start to feed itself and just create this fusion with, with power that you know that comes out of it that's way more than what we put into it so that's one way they're trying it another way they're trying it is is they're also using magnetic fields um and it was called a tokamak which is like you, you know imagine like a big giant donut tube and they're then using the magnetic fields to, to use pressure and crush down on the, the whatever fuel they're using there to create the plasma and use it that way. That's another way. Another way is kind of a combination of both of those where they use the um, some lasers to start the to get it up started, but then using the, the fields to 
continue to work to build it up into a um, a plasma, which hopefully then, you know, continues to just feed it, it become self-sustaining. That's the word I was trying to think of. Another. Self-sustaining uh, plasma, which then produces way more energy than what we put into it. So it was awesome, though, but we did reach uh, ignition, which is the uh, blah, blah, blah. once these conditions are achieved, fusion reactions release several particles, including alpha particles, which interact with the surrounding plasma and heat it up further. The heated plasma then releases more alpha particles and so on in a self-staining reaction, a process referred to as ignition. However, this process has never been realized before until now. The results from the experiment on the 8th of August indicate an energy output of over one megajoule, which marks the threshold agreed for the onset of ignition and is six times the previous highest energy achieved. China's actually uh, produced... Pretty close to these results as well, if I'm not mistaken. Recently, I have to go back and look for it. It an article probably a month or so before I started making these where China, they, you know, they're getting pretty close with their technology and understanding of creating plasma fusion conditions here on Earth. This is interesting. And rounding out is kind of a dip into a completely different subject, but... You know, the three things we can all work on to better ourselves, regardless of anything else you do. Start with these three things and then, you know, we'll, we'll like I said before, there's no advice or nothing just for me. Sleeping, getting good sleep, sleeping well, restorative sleep. Nutrition, finding, this is one of the harder ones to kind of get agreement on, I probably mentioned before the right foods to put into your mouth at the right times and the right quantities to, to optimize your, your, your health and, and, you know, our bodies, our temple, and elevating your heart rate several times a week. And this talks about here that doing micro workouts, which is almost now going to feel like cheating for a lot of people, but if you can just even supplement this in for if you do you know, instead of just if you're an individual who like, oh, I'm dead set on certain specific long term, long, not long term, but longer uh, time. You know, you like to work. I'm going to work out for 45 minutes or hour. Or I'm not working out at all. Maybe the supplementing end, what you're doing with that, with these ideas is not a bad idea. And if you're doing nothing because you think, oh, I'm not going to work out for 45 minutes, then, hey, no, you can you can get up and do something. What are they saying here? That basically, turns out there might be another solution for staying healthy when it feels like you don't have time to exercise, which everybody has excuses. The evidence for short bursts of activity has been mounting for some time. But now there's research showing that even really small sessions can have bona fide benefits called exercise snacks. And they're even talking about Less than a minute, 20 seconds of jump squats, stair climbing, burpees. And that's one thing I learned from one of my mentors. And I'm not sure even if I, I had to get clarification from people who go say names or stuff. But he taught us a long time ago. He was very influential in the life of myself and uh, my cohort of friends from my neighborhood, neighborhood, my neighborhood, who are still very close to this day. And he one day was like, Shim, never take stairs. Stay, never take the stairs. For what? Take the cotton picking stairs? I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm saying I'm trying to be funny and say his voice, and I said it wrong. He was like, elevator. Shim, I never take elevator. Take the stairs. Take cotton picking elevator. Get some exercise. And so I love this man, and he's been a huge impact on my life. And even now to this day, I take the stairs, and I see the difference. And even around when I'm around people, you know, I know when I first started at a, at a place and I'm there, and everyone is going from floor one or two on an on the elevator. They getting up going one floor in the elevator because it, it's just habit. It's programming. You see everybody else always getting on the elevator, so you get on the elevator, and they go up one floor, two floors, 
and, and no matter, I, and I tell them, and they see me, and then they're walking with me, and they want to kind of stay walking with me or talking, and they, I'm always taking the stairs. And I learn how all the different ways through, through the buildings because you learn how where all the stairs are at. And I don't care how many stairs, I mean, what flight I'm going to. If I have the option I can take the stairs and, you know, it's feasible, then, yeah, I'm, I'm you, you know, I'm taking the stairs, period. Five flights, six flights, seven you know, as long as I'm not, you know, carrying something or in a rush or got to, you know, if I have the, if it's feasible, taking the stairs, regardless. So definitely if it's floor three, four, floor two or anything like that, um, it's not even a question in those cases that I'm taking the stairs, even if I am carrying something <laughs> in those cases. So never knowing that this probably was those little things that been very helpful throughout the years. So things like that. Um, Every day, my my friend, very close brother of mine, throws a exercise ball. I don't know what we call it. I, I thought I called it a CrossFit ball. I was wrong. CrossFit ball. I was wrong. An exercise ball. We throw it, roll it, and on there are different things, and that's it's, it's just these. And we've been doing it for about three months for our group. Everybody see what he roll, and you have your choice to do it. You can modify it. So today, I'll say he rolled. Uh, 20 burpees so you gotta do 20 burpees you can do model you can look you know google youtube it see what a burpee is if you're not sure or um see you can also do modify burpees so look up burpee or modify burpee if you can do it do 20 and so that's just one of your little exercise snacks and so you can do something like that. Get one of those, like a big giant dice ball with different exercises on it. You roll it. And I, every day I'm going to come on here and say what he rolled, you know, that day. So just to give people some uh, some motivation. So my guy, that man, we rolled them 20 burpees today. So I'm going to come out and I don't know if I said at the beginning or the end, but we're going to talk about what, what you can do to get you a bit of an exercise snack and come up with your regimen and, Please, um, you know, we, you have to be invested in making yourself incredible. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. But it, is, it can happen, and it's a choice. So please choose to be amazing. Choose to be that individual. And with that said, I love you. You love yourself. God loves us. And that's all that matters.